China has just crossed a line the West never thought it could. After cutting off Intel and AMD, Beijing poured over $100 billion into building its own AI empire, and it's already paying off. From Huawei's Ascend chips powering data centers to SMIC producing advanced 7 nanometer wafers under sanctions, the Made in China AI revolution is unstoppable. While US companies face export bans and political chaos, China is quietly creating a world where it doesn't need Silicon Valley anymore. The question isn't if Intel can catch up, it's whether it still matters. At the center of this transformation stands Huawei, once banned, blacklisted, and written off by the West. Today, it's the face of China's AI resilience. Huawei's Ascend AI chips are now powering massive data centers across Asia, from Beijing to Dubai, designed to train large language models rivaling OpenAI and Google. The company's in-house software stack, MindSpore, is now fully optimized to run without a single line of US code. In other words, China just built its own version of the AI world, from hardware to algorithms. Behind the scenes, SMIC, China's largest semiconductor foundry, has done the impossible, producing seven nanometer chips under heavy sanctions, without access to EUV lithography from ASML. While Intel struggles to bring its 7 nanometer Intel 4 process to full yield, SMIC achieved comparable density using older DUV tools, proving that innovation isn't limited to the West. Analysts now estimate that SMIC could reach 5 nanometer capability by 2026, fully closing the gap. But it's not just about chips. Beijing is pouring billions into AI factories, facilities that merge supercomputing and data processing into national-scale infrastructure. These aren't consumer gadgets. They're the digital engines of the next industrial revolution. Think of them as the steel mills of the AI era, forging intelligence, not metal. Meanwhile, Intel, once the unchallenged king of computing, is now stuck in survival mode. Its data center business has shrunk, profit margins have collapsed, and its once glorious dominance over CPU markets is fading. Intel's attempts to pivot toward foundry services and AI accelerators have been met with mixed results, while China's ecosystem is scaling at lightning speed. Beijing's strategy is simple but brilliant, total technological sovereignty. By controlling its own chip design, manufacturing, and AI software, China ensures that no external force, no sanction, no export ban can ever halt its progress again. It's a model that's inspiring other nations too. Across the global south, from Brazil to Saudi Arabia, governments are now partnering with Chinese tech firms to build their own AI infrastructure, free from US oversight. What started as a trade war has evolved into something much bigger, an AI arms race. And China is no longer the underdog, it's setting the rules, designing the chips, and building the systems that could redefine global computing for decades. So the question isn't just how China caught up, it's how far it's willing to go. And that's where the story gets even more interesting. While US politicians talk about protecting national security, China is protecting something far more strategic, data sovereignty. Every AI system depends on massive amounts of data, and whoever controls that data controls the future. Beijing understands this perfectly. That's why it's building a closed loop ecosystem of AI factories, private clouds, and chip networks that operate entirely within Chinese borders. The message is clear. No more dependence on Silicon Valley, no more US surveillance, and no more foreign backdoors. But here's where the West is making a critical mistake. It still believes China's success depends on copying. That era is over. The new generation of Chinese AI chips, led by Huawei's Ascend 910B and 310B, isn't just catching up. It's outperforming in energy efficiency and scalability. Reports from China's Ministry of Industry suggest Huawei's chips now match NVIDIA's performance in specific AI training workloads, especially in enterprise and government models optimized for Mandarin-based tasks. Meanwhile, Intel and AMD are losing ground fast. Intel's Gaudi AI chip program was supposed to compete with NVIDIA, but limited supply chains, export restrictions, and rising costs are slowing everything down. 
AMD's MI300 series faces similar hurdles, too expensive, too power-hungry, and too dependent on Taiwan's TSMC. And this brings us to a bigger picture, the fragmentation of the internet itself. The world is slowly splitting into two digital ecosystems, one led by the US and the other by China. In the US version, data flows freely, often too freely, through servers owned by American companies. In the Chinese version, data is tightly controlled, protected, and localized. Whether you see that as safety or censorship depends on your perspective. Quick pause. Speaking of protection, here's something you can control right now. If you value your online privacy, especially when browsing global finance or tech news, you need NordVPN. It's the same tool cybersecurity experts and journalists use to stay safe from government surveillance and data tracking. With one click, you can hide your location, secure your data, and access information that might otherwise be blocked in your region. Use my special link in the description to get 77% off plus three extra months free. That's NordVPN, the fastest and most trusted VPN out there. Now back to China, the country that just redefined the meaning of digital independence. Beijing isn't just exporting hardware anymore. It's exporting AI ecosystems. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, and Indonesia are signing billion-dollar deals with Huawei and SMIC to build AI zones, regional networks that can operate independently from U.S. tech infrastructure. These partnerships aren't short-term. They're rewriting global alliances. What the West once saw as cheap labor has turned into strategic leverage. China owns the mines for rare earth metals, the plants that refine them, and now the chips that make AI possible. The United States, for the first time in decades, is realizing it can't dictate the rules anymore. The real shock isn't that China built its own chip industry, it's that it did it faster, cheaper, and smarter than anyone believed possible. What started as a domestic survival plan has now turned into China's most powerful export, AI factories. These are not typical manufacturing plants. They are vast digital infrastructures, filled with racks of Huawei's Ascend chips, liquid-cooled SMIC processors, and petabytes of domestic training data. Their purpose? To mass-produce artificial intelligence, not devices. The Chinese government calls them National Intelligent Computing Centers. Each one is a hybrid between a data center and a research lab, capable of training thousands of neural networks simultaneously. In 2020, there were fewer than 10 of these across China, by 2025, that number will surpass 70, spanning cities like Shenzhen, Chengdu, and Wuhan. Together, they will process over 100 exaflops of computing power, more than the entire European Union combined. But Beijing's ambitions don't stop at its borders. In the last year alone, Chinese firms have signed AI infrastructure deals with over a dozen nations, from the Middle East to Southeast Asia. Huawei recently completed an AI data hub in Saudi Arabia, built to serve Vision 2030's smart city projects. In Malaysia, it's setting up an AI cloud zone that will host regional fintech algorithms and surveillance analytics. And in Indonesia, a Huawei-led consortium is helping develop AI tools for agriculture, logistics, and public safety. Each of these AI factories runs on Chinese hardware, Chinese code, and Chinese standards. That means China isn't just selling products. It's exporting digital architecture. Every foreign government that adopts it becomes part of Beijing's technological sphere of influence. And that's where the US is starting to panic. Intel and Nvidia can't compete in this new model. They sell chips. China sells self-contained ecosystems. For Western firms, that's a logistical nightmare because while Intel waits for new fabs to open in Arizona or Germany, Huawei and SMIC are already licensing their AI systems abroad. Each new deal increases China's share of global data, computation, and, most importantly, influence. Even Western analysts now admit that China's approach might redefine globalization itself. Instead of exporting goods through ports, it's exporting intelligence through cables. Each AI factory becomes a node in a growing Chinese-led digital belt, a modern version of the Silk Road but powered by algorithms instead of caravans. And here's the irony. While Washington imposes sanctions to contain China, those same restrictions are forcing Chinese firms to innovate faster. 
Huawei no longer depends on US software, Nvidia no longer dominates GPU benchmarks in Asia, and Intel is fighting a battle it can't even see, the chip war isn't being fought in Silicon Valley. It's being won in Shenzhen. For decades, America's technological supremacy seemed untouchable. But now, the future is being coded in Mandarin. And the next phase of the AI revolution might not come from a Silicon Valley garage, but from a glowing data fortress somewhere deep in China's digital empire. The rise of China's AI empire isn't just about technology, it's about power. For decades, the United States dominated global standards in computing, communications, and finance. But now, Beijing is rewriting the rules of the digital economy, one algorithm at a time. What used to be American-controlled software, Microsoft, Google, Oracle, is being replaced by Chinese frameworks like Mindspore, Paddle Paddle, and Kunlun. And as these systems spread across Asia, Africa, and Latin America, the foundation of a new world order is quietly being built, one where China defines how intelligence operates. This transformation is geopolitical as much as it is technological. In the Cold War, power was measured in nuclear warheads. In the 21st century, it's measured in computing power. And China is accumulating it faster than anyone else. With each new AI factory, Beijing gains more control over digital infrastructure, influencing how nations manage security, communication, and even elections. Countries that rely on Chinese AI now depend on Chinese updates, servers, and maintenance. It's digital diplomacy, backed not by troops or tanks, but by terabytes and training data. In contrast, the United States is struggling to coordinate its own tech industry. Intel, once a symbol of American innovation, is begging for subsidies under the CHIPS Act just to stay competitive. NVIDIA, though still dominant in GPUs, can't export its best hardware to China without government approval. The result? A fractured tech ecosystem where bureaucracy and politics outweigh innovation. Meanwhile, China's approach is centralized and strategic. Every major AI company, Huawei, SMIC, Baidu, and even state-backed startups, operates under a unified national vision. Technological self-reliance. The government directs funding, universities produce talent, and private companies execute with military precision. It's a system built not for quarterly profits, but for long-term dominance. And the numbers speak for themselves. By 2024, China accounted for over 70% of all global AI patents. Its supercomputers now top international rankings. Its digital payment systems process more transactions daily than Visa and MasterCard combined. And its AI-generated exports, from chips to software, are spreading faster than any Western analyst expected. The consequence? The world is beginning to pivot east. African nations are adopting Huawei's cloud systems. Latin America is testing Chinese fintech platforms. Even Europe, once firmly aligned with U.S. tech, is starting to collaborate with Chinese research labs for AI governance and cybersecurity frameworks. The balance of technological power is shifting. And with it, the balance of economic and political influence. America's rules-based order is being challenged not through war, but through code. The next time you use an AI-powered app, look closely. It might not be American at all. It could be running on a Chinese model, trained in a Chinese data center, using a Chinese chip. And that's the moment the world will realize. The AI war is already over. It just hasn't been officially announced yet. The truth is simple. The AI revolution no longer belongs to Silicon Valley. While Washington debates policies and Intel fights to survive, China is quietly building the infrastructure of the future. One AI factory, one chip, one partnership at a time. What began as a response to sanctions has evolved into a full-scale technological transformation worth over $100 billion and growing every day. China isn't just competing anymore, it's leading. Setting the pace, defining the standards, and exporting intelligence across the planet. From the chips in your smartphone to the algorithms analyzing global markets, Traces of China's new AI empire are everywhere. For the West, this isn't just an economic wake-up call. It's a question of survival in a world that's moving faster than policy can keep up. The next five years will decide who truly controls the digital age. So stay tuned, because the story of this global power shift is only beginning, and it's unfolding right before our eyes. If you found this analysis valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. 
because the next video will uncover just how far China plans to take its AI domination.